Greetings iCast Racing fans, Sharky here and welcome back to Sharky's Garage. Today we have something a little bit different. We have an unboxing and review of a product from HTI Teamsters, their Street Race Showdown. Here it is, it's rather a large box, so I'm finding it a little difficult to get a decent camera angle to get it all in and also still be able to work on it. It comes with five cars, it comes with track, most importantly it comes with this. It's a finish gate that has a timer on it, it has a countdown, so it goes duh, 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 and then starts up to a 30 second run which will be perfect for Vulcan Raceway. This was a Christmas present for me from TJ and came from the entertainer here in the UK. I'll show you some details in a second of that. Uh -huh. It has a double loop in it although I'm unlikely to use that. It's clamped to something. I'm going to clamp it to my little table to demonstrate it in a little while. You will need two 1.5 volt AA or LR6 batteries. I think you can see it looks pretty cool. As I say, this came from The Entertainer, um, which is thetoyshop.com here in the UK. Currently priced at $19.99, down from $29.99. I don't. Uh, there was another deal on that was even better than that um, pre-Christmas, I believe. So there it is. So if you want to pick one up and you're in the UK, that's where you can get it from. Worldwide, you may find this sold under other things because HTI have multiple brands. They also are part of Adventure Force, which is in Walmart um, and Asda, I believe. Carousel, which is in Tesco's. Chad Valley, um, and a few others. And I'll show you in a minute how you tell whether it's an HTI vehicle or not. Right, down to the actual unboxing. Because as nice as the box art is, you're more interested about what's inside and what's on the box. So, this is the start gate and clamps. You've got track which I do believe, and we will see in a little while, is compatible with other brands. But it's got some nice long lengths. I don't know whether you can see there. But that length there is approximately half a metre. A lot longer than the standard track lengths. These are the base plates for the loop-de-loop. -loop. I'm not going to set up and use the loop-de-loop -loop today. It's not fitting with my style of things, but I will set this up as a straight racetrack. And these are the supports for loop-to-loop. -loop. And you see it all. I'll show you in a bit. I'll lock it all together. Um... So lots of fun. 
and instructions. It should show you how to set it all up. HTI toys. Oh, focus. FY7, 7MY. They're based up in Fleetwood, which is near Blackpool, Lancashire, here in the UK. So lots of detail. But here's the interesting bit of how the gate works. Shows you what parts you should have in the kit and how it goes together. This is the I have already opened it and had a look. And this is the Stargate. Now I've unbagged the parts. I have actually put a battery in this, or batteries in this. I'm taking this screw out here on the back, putting the two batteries in. Turn it on. Yeah. Not sure, quite sure how it triggers. But it works with cars, believe you me. And a maximum clock time of 30 seconds. It does actually work with cars. I've tested this. I don't know why my fingers are not triggering it or what it is, whether it's the metallic or quite what. We will see. You can see why this may be of interest to people like myself who do die cast racing. Um, it gives us a finish line with a timeline um, that appears to be an effective cheap way to give us a finish gate. It also has a lane indicator for the winner. Uh, what I should have done was got a car out to show that off. So I will now get the cars out and go over those. Here's our pack of included cars. Now, HCI Teamsters don't tend to do actual casts. They do look-alike casts. So some of these vehicles look like other vehicles, um, but they are not necessarily branded and licensed. The one cool thing about all HCI Teamsters brands is this. All of their bodies are put together with screws, which means for modification purposes, you can take those two screws out, change the wheels and axles to add weight, to modify, etc. And that's why I think the HTI Teamsters vehicles are so cool. Now, I'm actually launching two competitions. There will be one that will be coming up starting the end of January with a 16 car open driver call. So that means there will be 16 vehicles and people can sign up on my YouTube channel to drive one of those cars in the competition. Who knows? 
I may even have prizes for the winners. What I'll do at the end of that is announce a my first mail-in competition, which means you take an HTI Teamsters cast, you can add whatever wheels and axles you want, you can add as much weight as you want, no minimum, no maximum. You send them in to me, once I've got 16, I will then do a competition for the top Teamsters HTI cast, which will obviously happen a lot later in 2021. Anyway, back to what was in the box. These are the ramp sections, which, interestingly enough, just click together like so. They have these pieces lock into the sides so that you can lock two of them together like so to make a single or because there's enough of these you can do it like so but you can also turn it round so that they can have and you could create a barrel from it because it's flexible again one of the things I like about the Teamsters HTI stuff is the play aspects of it they're very clever with how they put things together, which means that you can be flexible with what you do, how you do. And uh, let's take that should make this easier to come out. Not try taking them apart, but um, yeah. So that all fixes underneath here. But that means that then this one go back to being this way so if you wanted with these same parts you could create a triple loop or even a quadruple loop as opposed to the two single loops which I think is really cool. This is their start gates, which are very different. They clamp up, which we'll see used in a bit, and they launch like so, which for our racing side of things, if we join the two together, you could use that way. Um, so that you can pre do one press will actually launch both. Um, I have quite a good function in start gate, so not necessarily going to do that for my racing. But I will set these up and show you how they work. So you can see here, I've constructed gate by putting the tabs in sliding the track in it does now work and here you can see that the car went through in this lane, this lane was the winner and the time was three seconds. So I think you can see how useful this will be to those of us within the diecast racing world. 
Try again on the other lane so you can see the other lane working. I think that's pretty funky and this is the reason why I put this track on my Christmas list. Now I'm going to set the track up um, to let you have a look. Just wanted to give a quick demonstration and show that spacing on this is a little too wide for Hot Wheels double track where it's the conjoined track underneath but if you're running two single Hot Wheels tracks <clears throat> it will work perfectly so you can use that it's just we you can't run the the double track into this Just a couple of extra little things before we move on to the actual track and running footage. Because of the way these loop the loops work, they're packed down nice and easy, which means that when your child or the adult is not playing with these things, they don't take up a lot of space. Because I'm not running the loop to loop on the track that I'm planning to set up today, there wasn't quite enough connectors in the pack for what I wanted to do but these standard Hot Wheels connectors when flipped over work perfectly also standard Hot Wheels track Next up, to the finish gate. As you can see here, I don't know how clearly you can see that. There's a little gap each side. They're a little narrower. So you may find and I don't have any to test, otherwise I would, that Disney Cars toys may actually run on this track where they won't run on this track because it's too narrow. If I can find a Disney Cars one in the next short period of time, I will add some footage in of that. Amend them. If you've got any of these older Mattel connectors, they're thinner, and actually don't cause the underneath bits here to bulge out as much. And they work just as well underneath. So just putting a thank you out to TJ for the loan of a couple of his cars figures, two versions of the Hudson Hornet. You can see they're quite a bit wider than the others. What I won't do without running over the side actually run on Hot Wheels track. But what they will do
is run on the Teamsters track. So there's another good reason. If you, your child has some of these style of things, they may work on this track, but they don't work on this track. I just got the tape measure out and the long sections of track are 58 and a half centimeters long. The short section is 41, giving us a 2.24 meter run down to the finish gate, which I don't know whether you can see. Let's see if I can adjust this up. That's it. Let's see that we can get. Yep. Which means it's just under a scale eighth of a mile. 3.143 meters is one eighth of a mile. As I say, um, the track is not designed to run in this configuration as such. By dropping out the end section of track um, would make it easier for you to run it like this. Um, essentially, you could run it with two long sections straight uh, without any additional bits. Um, but if, as long as you've got connectors from other pieces of track, you can put this together like this. But let's see some racing. So we're going to go with the traditional red car versus the blue car. I've turned the start gate on down at the far end, so I'll go down and trigger that. Hopefully I'll be back in time to press these two on the back. Under the rear end of these there is a little divot for the rear wheels to sit in that hold them in place. So you can see there, the red car won, that lane is flashing, that was 1.5 seconds. Let's try another one. The yellow car and the white car. Looks like this side lane seems to be a tad faster. I'll try them again, but running down the other side. But actually, first I'm going to run the orange car on its own down that track just to show that the other lane is working. A little bit slower on the launch that time, but it just shows that the other lane is working. Right, let's see how we go this time. We know the blue car lost the first one. The winner that time was the red car in 1.4 seconds. I don't know whether you can actually see that from here. The white car against the orange car. Looks like the white car beat the orange car there. So we will see with the switch lanes.
white car there, squares it up. Third and final decider. Yeah, white car, clear win there, 1.4 seconds. Which takes us on to the final, which will be the white car versus the red car. White car win there, change lanes. Red car has evened it up. Decider. And the red car wins. So this concludes today's video, which is an unboxing review of the Teamsters HTI Street Race Showdown. I think you can see it's awesome value for money. There are a lot of play features there. The fact that the track can be used with the or some of the Disney cars. I can't be certain they'll be used with all of them, but it's certainly more usable with Disney cars cars than um, Hot Wheels track is. You've got this awesome finish gate, which is a great play toy, enables children, even if you only have one child and they're playing on their own, it enables them to play and have more fun than they would do normally. I think for the Dice Cast Racing community, I think this is awesome, given the price of it. The start gates are interesting. Um, it would be nice to see a version of this where there's two of them together with one thing, one launch. I love the flexibility of the loop the loops. So you can do it as two tracks, you can do it as one track with a, with a, uh, a single loop, or whether you want to go double loop or even triple loop. Um, so that's a really good feature. The cars themselves, they are realistic, if not real. The fact that you can undo the screws and modify them, I think is fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please do subscribe to the channel. I put video content out every Monday and every Friday. As it stands at the minute, Mondays um, is normally something to do with diecast racing and Fridays is normally to do with RC content. Goes live at 6 p.m. GMT. But if you're subscribed to the channel and you have put the notification bell on, you'll be told when I put videos live because I sometimes put videos live midweek or when there's bonus content. Please leave me a comment down in the comments section. Be interesting to see other people's thoughts on this track, on this set, and the abilities and extra th things that it gives to us that are not available from other brands. Thank you very much for watching.